Hi everyone, I am very excited to announce that I will be joining Booktube, if, if they'll have me, that is. Before we begin, uh, let's do a tea check. I've got my Princess Grey, which is like a more gentle version of Earl Grey, and I've got it in my moon mug. There is actually an owl, like an owl pair to this moon mug. That was really badly explained. I have an owl mug as well that is like that goes with the moon mug um, that I'll show you maybe next time, maybe in the next video that you're gonna definitely watch. Um, not every video is gonna be on books in the future, but I just wanna sprinkle some in. I used to read so much, so much. I cannot, <laughs> like, I literally from the age of, I don't know, the age when I could start reading, I don't remember when, um, until the age of 13 or 12, I read so intensely. I actually was incredibly sleep deprived because, and would often get like five or six hours sleep. Sorry, I know this is like incredibly bad for child development, but I would get very, very little sleep because I would stay up until like two in the morning on a school night reading books. And then when I reached 13, I just stopped. I've read the odd book, but genuinely, I read like a handful a year, maybe. Um, I think some years I went with just reading one or two. Like it was really quite sad. And I think a huge part of my problem was just choosing books. Once you're into a book, you read it instantly, but it's getting into a book and it's knowing which one to read. I just felt like that's where I lost my way anyway. I'm sure there are a lot of reasons why I lost my way, but I'm deeply regretful of it. I really want to start reading more. Obviously, reading's now fashionable, which is cool and exciting. But yeah, so let this video be a formal statement that I plan on reading more. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my, about my journey so far. As I said, I was obsessed with reading growing up. Um, read all the classic books that you read as a British young person uh, and just young person, I guess. So a lot of Jacqueline Wilson, <laughs> um, terrifying. And loads of classics um, because obviously like most of my book recommendations were just from school. So I was, ended up reading a lot of like difficult to read books and I, I think that's a part of what has made me really intimidated because I have this really ingrained snobbery around books like when I look at some massive booktubers and I see that they're reading kind of contemporary romance books like a part of me is pretty pretty icked out by it like I know I'm wrong for it but it just feels like the kind of snobby 12 year old in me feels like it's not real reading if you're reading romance and it's contemporary and it's not a 600 word tiny font novel um so i think that's a part of the struggle but obviously you don't need to feel sorry for me i'm horrible and judgmental so yeah a lot of michael morpurgo i also read how i live now which I don't know if this is like a common childhood experience of like this book just being in the school library and you're reading it and it just feels wildly inappropriate, but I read that book. If you know, you know. I was about 10 or 11 when I read it, so I don't know. I mean, I turned out fine, so I think we're all good. Anyway, as I said, when I reached about 12 or 13, so when I basically moved on to secondary school, I stopped like pretty much completely. I can't remember, but I really think that aside from the odd book, I just cannot get over how rapidly the rate of my reading went down. I think a huge part of it, sort of boomer alert, but a huge part of it was social media. That was when I got given a phone and I guess also just socializing in general, not necessarily online. Um, it's one of those times in your life where you're like making loads of new friends again. I went to a new school. Uh, so there was just a lot to distract me from reading. Like at the time, maybe it was fine, I don't know. But it's one of those things like reading and doing a lot of it is a habit. And so if you fall out of it, the difficulty isn't like the actual doing it. It's like the, the getting started and the moment that you're having a lull, you don't kind of go on social media or like text hang out with your friend. You're just like, oh, actually I wanna read. Like it's the, 
it's the choice issue as opposed to like whether or not you enjoy it enough to do it. I'm sure if you're a book person you will understand loads of these but I just want to quickly talk about why I am so keen to return to it. Like I feel, I mean it's one of those things, you can't have hashtag regrets but I do regret not having reading being like a habit for the book. Oh, I'm gonna have some of my Earl Grey actually, my Princess Grey, sorry. Primarily it just brought me so much joy um, it provides this escape in a similar way to social media in terms of like how much it grabs your attention um, but it's so much more rewarding I feel like with um, social media you can really kind of scroll and it takes you to this other universe for a few hours maybe but you come out of it and if you've just been scrolling on Instagram or whatever you come out of it and you just couldn't tell anyone like what's just happened you have no real because everything's so short form and it's really kind of there's no like thread pulling it through there's this horrible sense of like the time has just disappeared and you just have nothing to show for it whereas reading is so much more you know you go into this world and you follow a story and you also you know you're learning new words um and you're just escaping from your reality a bit, but it feels like it's in a much more healthy way. And obviously social media can also just lead to loads of like comparison and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not gonna go into that because I feel like that this is a topic that's been covered a million times before, but social media is kind of bad in other ways. So that is a huge part of it. I feel like it's a really good like stimulating escape as opposed to a kind of numbing escape. Reason number two um, is that I just have reading to thank for all of my academic success. I feel like I cannot overstate how important reading was to me being quite a successful like kid at school and then at university. It was such a big part of learning how to problem solve, also like learning socialising and stuff. I feel like I've read that reading is really like increases empathy in people because obviously you're learning how to put yourself in someone else's shoes you're like diving into another experience considering other realities um but also like i was actually talking to a friend of mine who's a teacher the other day and they were talking about how when it comes to kids obviously maths is important you know, all these specific subjects are important, but the one thing that they are so desperately trying to drive is reading because it is one of the strongest indicators of like future success. So the amount you read when you're younger is really strongly correlated with how much you earn when you're older. And although I'm talking about like school and childhood, um, I feel like I am losing out on a lot of like brain gym opportunities by not reading much anymore. So I think on that note, reading creates a really good cycle of confidence. Again, like I'm speaking just personally, um, for me at least. I look back on my younger days reading loads and obviously as I said, like it helps with your vocabulary and just like learning how to sentence structures and your kind of reasoning with words which helps you interact with, I mean, especially when you're younger, it helps you interact with older people more because you can talk to them more effectively, you have a better vocabulary. And then as a result, the older people, whether they're like family friends or teachers, they speak to you as though you're more mature. And it just becomes this like positive cycle of being treated like you're clever and so being clever. And although it maybe it's not always a good thing for like intelligence to be the most important thing ever. Um, it's so key, just like that confidence is so key in like learning new things and feeling like you really can do stuff. Reading can impact kind of confidence just socially and like talking about certain topics, using certain words. Like I really wanna expand my vocabulary because I feel like my vocabulary got to a point and then I stopped reading and I just haven't, it hasn't changed since I was 12. I'm not even joking. I look back at some of my Facebook posts and I'm just like, wow, I peaked. <laughs> I really and truly peaked. And then the final reason that I want to get into reading is it improves writing. 
Um, I don't think this one needs to ex- <laughs> like be explained too much, but obviously alongside all the reasons I mentioned just now, if you read lots, you are able to write better. And random pipe dream, I have many random pipe dreams, but I feel like maybe I will write a book one day and by reading I can make it an actually good book as opposed to just a failed YouTuber book because obviously like I'm going to be a really successful YouTuber. Um, So I don't want to have one of those like, who was it who did that terrible poetry book? Oh, I can't remember the name. Anyway, I don't want to do that. So a little bit more detail on my recent history with reading. Let's take a look at Goodreads actually. So I have read the odd book. Where is my Goodreads account? Here it is. Uh, I got a Goodreads account a few months ago. See this, this me wanting to get back into reading has really, it's been in the, it's been in the pipe. Is that a bit been in the pipeline for a few months? Red, let's look at my red. Um, so when I got onto Goodreads, I did actually like add stuff that I read when I was really young. The Kite Runner, that's a brilliant book. I Am Pilgrim, that was slightly annoying. So these are all books, Far From The Madding Crowd, Hot Milk, On Chesil Beach. It's it's actually quite the, quite the range. Little Fires Everywhere, whenever I've read a book, it's just been because someone's been like, oh, you should read that. Or like I read um, Michelle Obama's Becoming, and that's because my brother gave it to me for Christmas. Um, so it's, it's just a kind of like decision-making issue that I have surrounding like why I'm not reading. The Great Gatsby, that's a classic. Sorry, unoriginal thought, but... <laughs> And then Varjak Paul, this is getting into books that I read when I was a child. Catcher in the Rye, Do No Harm. I would like to read some of the books that snobby 12 year old Chloe would not read, not out of refusal, but out of just this like ingrained sense of like, if it's not a classic or it's not something my teacher told me I should read, like it's not worth it. So I do wanna read some of the like contemporary romance books that I see floating around. Just as an idea of what I plan to do, I want to try to read a book per week or two. Um, But obviously, like I'm gonna start small because I think if I try to just set out on some massive challenge, um, it's just like the worst way to build a habit is to start with a bang because you just like can't sustain it and you instantly fail. It is difficult though to set targets with books because it stops you from reading longer ones. Not stops you, but like it, it just adds this layer of intimidation that like long books already have. Um, so I might ignore that rule, we'll see. And another thing that I just wanna note is that a part of the drive to talk about this on my channel, it's not just about like documenting it um, for you and being part of the booktube community and kind of talking about it, but it's also just documenting it for myself. Um, something that I found, I found, like I found and I find quite sad about reading books is I often will just have like no memory of the book that I've read. Like I'll remember elements and lessons. Obviously I don't mean like immediately after, but quite soon after you'll remember elements and you'll remember lessons from it, which I guess is the most important part. But I hate not being able to like recall the author and the name of the book. You can just like remember sort of segments of a story. Um, And I feel like it would be a really nice way to like honor the books that I really enjoy. Um, or just the books that like really made me think. Let's talk about what I've done so far towards this, towards this journey. I have a Kindle, let me show it to you. This was my mum's Kindle, I inherited it. I think the plan is, is I will read books on Kindle and then if I really loved the book, I'll buy it and I'll keep it. Um, And what I do like about books to be fair is like letting friends borrow them. Although obviously they get lost in the mix sometimes when you do that. It's really nice to like be like, I recommend this book. Here, read it. Although I had someone do that to me with A Little Life recently and I haven't been able to read it and it does feel like a personal insult. Um, Anyway, another thing that I'm really excited to look into is um, the local library. Surely one of the points, you know, like of living in a big, ludicrously expensive to live in city is access to amenities and access to stuff like libraries. I also think there's a really fun, like I associate such positive memories with borrowing books from a library. There's a really lovely ritual around it. 
um, you know, around like looking for that spine that you want. And like, I don't know, it's just this like cozy nerd girl aesthetic that I would love to return to. I also have a coat. Should I show you the coat? I have a coat that has a massive pocket and it's perfectly sized. You can fit a book in there, so, which means you can definitely fit a Kindle in there, but you can fit a book in the pocket. And it's this brown autumnal coat. Um, and I just, I've had it for a while, but I cannot wait to wear it and just be a book girly, as I've said, a big, big old book girly. So if I'm being honest, that's my main motivator for joining BookTube. Question, what are people's experiences with Audible? I am considering it because I love a good long walk and I feel like it'd be good for that. But then the structure seems really confusing. Um, like the whole, well, not really confusing, but it seems like not the simplest thing in the world. Uh, so that's just my, my one gripe for you. And then finally, I have three books in the mix. So number one that I'm really excited to start reading. I've actually bought this one um, and it's getting delivered tomorrow. So I've bought the paperback is I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one because um, it's an autobiography, which is very different or a memoir. I actually don't know the difference. So it's very different to anything I've really read before as someone whose mum has died. It sounds like it's a very honest and, but also like humorous book. And I'm really looking forward to that angle. I feel like you have, there's nothing quite like it in the mainstream. Although I appreciate like her relationship with her mum was incredibly bad. I think it will be a really interesting read. I also, this is quite random, but it was like on sale and everyone raves about it. I'm gonna read Atomic Habits. I'm incredibly late to the bandwagon. I've already bought it now, so don't say anything if it's bad. Finally, I am considering reading East of Eden because it's obviously a classic. It's massive and Uncarly, a booktuber I like. She read it as part of like a reading Emma Chamberlain's favorite book video and she really enjoyed it. So yeah, that's my, uh, declaration. That's my promise. I'm becoming a booktuber. I'm going to be embarrassed if I don't end up reading, but I think I will. I think I'm getting back into reading. I think public humiliation will stop me from not. Um, anyway, let me know your book recommendations. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.